how to keep your photos safe. For years, this has been a struggle from using external hard drives to burning your photos into disks. But both Apple Photos and Google Photos provide fantastic solutions. Today, we're gonna to look into the advantages and disadvantages of both of them and find out which one is the best one for you. So the first thing we should talk about is the cloud. What is the cloud? I'm gonna explain this in a nutshell. Whenever you shoot a photo with your phone, if you use Google Photos or Apple Photos, those photos are automatically stored in the cloud. So what, what's actually happening is that photo is being stored in Google or Apple's computers, their servers. Those servers are replicated all across the world. So if one fails, there's a backup, and if that one fails, there's another backup. So there's really no chance of your photos being deleted accidentally. They're also super secure, so there's no recorded history of an Apple or a Google Photos server hack. Any photo that has ever been leaked online happened because someone was careless about their phone or their computer passwords. So if all these photos are stored in the cloud, what does that mean for you? It means that you can access those photos anywhere. It means, again, that there's no chance of deleting them accidentally. And finally, it means that your devices are offloaded from those photos. So if you're running low on storage on either of your devices, both of these apps actually automatically delete the photos from your devices. They just keep a thumbnail so they can free up some space so you can take more photos. Now, uh, talking about some other shared features, both support video as well. Video is usually hard to handle because videos are often so large um, that they take up a lot of space, but both of them will handle your videos no problem. Uh, both of these apps also share great auto editing tools. So uh, there's this magic wand that you can press that automatically edits your photos. So it'll fix your, your color balance and your saturation and your brightness, and it'll make your photo look stellar with just a click, which is pretty much as good as automatic gets these days. Um, another great advantage of both of these apps is indexing. So both Apple Photos and Google Photos will index your photos based on their location. Whenever you shoot a photo with your phone, that photo probably has a GPS tag, which remembers the location where you actually shot that picture. What both of these do is that they let you browse, for example, your latest strip, because all the photos were shot around the same area, and they know that that's not the area where you usually take pictures. Both of them also index faces in your photos if you allow them to. So what that does is it groups photos of your kid or photos of your family or each, each person that you take a photo with and they're all grouped in the same place. Now, that of course is very useful if you're looking for a specific photo you took with that person, but they also use that information for little videos and custom things that they make. We'll look into those in a second. And finally, and this is probably the most powerful feature that both of these apps have, the assistant slash memories feature. What that does is it automatically groups photos from your latest trip or photos that you took X number of years ago, uh, or photos that you took with a certain person, and it groups them into little videos or automatic designs or automatic animations or automatic GIFs that they generate. So they, this is a great way to, you know, to share an old memory or just to remember something that happened a while ago in a fresh and creative way. And I think that this is pretty much the future. In the end, you know, the struggle, the reason why I started this blog is what do we do with all these photos that we've shot over the years? And both Assistant and Memories, I believe, uh, are gonna be the solution to this. There still works in progress. Um, they're not perfect, but I'm very confident that in the next, I don't know, five to 10 years, both of these features will certainly solve memories for us. Now, let's look in depth into the pros and cons of Apple versus Google Photos. Okay, so advantages of Apple Photos over Google Photos. The first one is support for live pictures. So a lot of phones these days are offering this feature of live photos. And what that actually does is when you shoot a picture, the camera it captures a little bit of video before and after you shoot the photo. So that lets you, for example, change the frame that you took, or it lets you make these little animated GIFs or, anim or animated boomerangs or loops out of your photos, photos that you maybe didn't even know were live, you can sort of bring a new life to them. Another great advantage of Apple Photos is support for raw images. So if you are a professional photographer or even an amateur photographer and you own a DSLR camera, um, you should be shooting all your photos in raw format. Basically, the raw format captures a lot more information on a picture. So it lets you, for example, correct overexposed or underexposed photos without blowing out any of the colors. So if you own a camera that shoots raw, you, sh you should absolutely be using that feature. And then you can know that Apple Photos will not only store those raw files for you, but provide the tools to edit them. That's something that Google Photos doesn't do. Finally, another great advantage of Apple Photos is that it's pretty much integrated into the Apple environment, especially for, for tools like iMovie or Final Cut Pro if you want to edit videos. So any photo or video that you've kept in Apple Photos, you can pretty much index from inside of iMovie or Final Cut 
and then bring them into your project. Now, disadvantages of Apple Photos. Um, it's an Apple only product. So if you own an iPhone, but you don't own a Mac, then importing photos into Apple Photos is only gonna be possible from your phone. And that might bring some complications. Another disadvantage of Apple Photos is that the web version is pretty much useless. So they have a native app for your Mac, and obviously they have a nav native app for your iPad or your iPhone, but the web version that you could potentially access on any browser is not useful at all. It doesn't have any of the editing tools, exporting photos out of there is hard, and it takes a long time to load, especially if you have a large library. Then I, I talked about the face recognition, right? So Apple doesn't do as well on recognizing faces as Google does. So, you know, taking the same library from one platform to the other, uh, I was able to get a lot more matches on certain faces on Google versus Apple Photos. So the, the other disadvantage here is that Apple Photos is a paid product. There's a free version that gives you five gigs for free, but that's really only enough for a handful of pictures. And after that, you need to go into a paid plan. Google does offer some free alternatives, and we'll look into those in a second as we review Google Photos. So for the past few days, I've been playing around with the new Huawei Mate 20 Pro. I made a whole video review about why I'm not keeping it as my main cell phone, but it gave me the opportunity to try Google Photos in depth on a device that wasn't manufactured by Apple. So some advantages of Google Photos. First of all, it's free. They have this option in which they compress all your photos into their high quality format, but you can upload as many photos as you want and you'll never be charged for it. So it's great if you don't care that much about keeping your photos in raw or if you trust their, their high definition, which is actually very good. Um, you can choose this option and then never have to pay to store your photos. So I'm assuming that's gonna be a fantastic feature for many of you. If you do choose to pay for Google Photos, here's a comparison table on the pricing for each one of them. Now, um, I mentioned that both Apple Photos and Google Photos have this memories slash assistant feature, but the Google Assistant is actually very, very nice. Uh, it'll, for example, pick a random video and turn it into a little GIF or it'll pick photos and change the colors completely. Or un since, it's, since Google's very efficient at understanding what is in the photo, uh, it can generate some pretty cool and creative results without any effort. This came to me as a, as a surprise. So uh, I went through the process of moving all my photos from Apple Photos to Google Photos, which was an extensive process because there are like 350 gigabytes of picture. Um, but as photos were uploading, I left my computer on and I just left it at the office just uploading pictures. Um, as new photos uploaded, the assistant started generating new, very, very cool GIFs and animations that would remind me of old times and maybe pictures that I forgot I had. Obviously, another advantage here is that Google Photos pretty much works on any device. So it'll work on an iPhone, it'll work on an Android phone, and the web version of Google Photos is actually very strong. It provides almost every single feature that you can find on the app version. So it gives you access to all your pictures in all devices, you know, when, wherever you are. So disadvantages of Google Photos, like I said, raw. Um, I do have a lot of raw photos that I like to store on Apple Photos and keep a backup there. And that's something that didn't work on, on Google Photos at all. Again, they provide you with the option of lo uploading them to Google Drive, but you know, they're not easy to index or you can't, you can't really edit them inside of Google Drive. So that's, I, that's something that I hope that they take care of because they're, they could be the strongest of the two if it wasn't for that feature. Now, the question is, which one did I end up using? I actually end up sticking with both. Uh, again, both have stuff that I really like and that make them a premium photo product for me. So uh, in case of Google, I think the strongest feature is the Assistant. Now, there's a whole deal about these automatic videos. And this is a lot of what I'm gonna be exploring over the next few months in this blog. I'm gonna go to Everest Base Camp as a project next year and I wanna understand what's the best way to document a trip like this. I'm obviously gonna bring all my cameras and my drone and my GoPro, but I'm prepared to spend a whole lot of time editing the video just the way I want it. I wanna balance and find out which is better if I should spend, I don't know, 100 hours editing this full production video or if Apple Photos or Google Photos can come up with a video that's maybe not as good, or hopefully not as good, but decent enough so that most of humanity can find a, an efficient way to organize their photos. I, sh I should also talk about uh, local storage. So before Apple Photos and Google Photos came along, your only alternative was really you know, keeping hard drives. The challenge with hard drives is that they're really just a time bomb. You know that a hard drive is gonna eventually fail. You just don't know when. And if a hard drive fails, you pretty much lose everything. So you might want to keep two hard drive backups, but that's going to cost maybe, what, $200 to keep two hard drives, and you have to keep them in sync. 
So it's not it's not efficient. It's no longer more efficient than than the cloud based alternative. Now, the final subject that we should talk about is security. We are all aware of, you know, celebrities photos being hacked or people's phones getting hacked and you know, their photos leaking online. Now, why does that happen? Um, as a matter of fact, it hasn't happened because Apple or Google were hacked. It, ha it happens because their accounts were hacked. Um, how do you protect yourself from this? Well, first of all, keep a strong password. Don't tell anybody your phone pin and you know, make it a complicated code. But I think the strongest resource that you have at your disposal is using two-step verification. In a nutshell, two-step verification means that you have your actual password and another pin, sort of six-digit password that gets refreshed and generated every 20 seconds. So if you have two-step verification and, you, and somebody tries to log in into a new device, they are going to need that number. And since they don't have it, since you're the only one who has that, um, then you're pretty much protected against most hacker attacks. Now, wrapping up, let me know in the comments which is your favorite platform and if I missed any of the most important features. See you next week.